Okay, well now <laughs> it's time for something else scary. Okay. It's the questions from Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> These are the questions direct from Reddit, and okay. I have not been privy to them yet. Okay. Do you have a dream look or ensemble that you've always wanted to wear that you've planned or conceptualized but have never had the chance to complete? Hmm. Uh, yes and no. I would love to just be able to go on stage completely naked. Ah. Naked would be the best thing for me. I think I would find the absolute freedom in that because I have spent an entire, you know, 20 something fucking years of covering myself in wonderful, beautiful things. And I have fantasized and, uh, and created and fabricated looks that have come out of my fantasy numerous times in my life but I've never been able to just bear it all and show my saggy, middle-aged ass. <laughs> uh, do we my have a concept un, for the my new? My unmanicured pubes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be naked in that way, but just the freedom of it. When I, you know, there's a beach in Provincetown where all the guys go naked and we took a boat out there one day and I was just like, fuck, I really, really want to take my swim trunks off right now and just show my cold, shriveled genitals. And did you? No, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Everyone's got phones now. I have my phone now. Right. These right. Out, so. Okay. <laughs> what has it been like being in the scene pre and post RuPaul's Drag Race? And what are the mm. best, best and worst parts of the drag scene now versus before Drag Race became mainstream? These are Reddit questions. Of course. So I am, I am that girl now. Mm. I'm that girl who has to explain what it looked like before Drag Race because <laughs> right. no one remembers. Yeah, exactly. And I was the only one alive. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a tale. Um, no, I think, you know what I do miss? I love where, where drag has come. I love that I can go to a convention here in Los Angeles, New York, or now in the United Kingdom and make some fucking money off fans. And if you thought that I was you know, going to DragCon not to make money, you've, you're sadly mistaken. It's a, <laughs> it's a lucrative and especially fun moment. But realizing that drag is now an industry is surreal, to say the least, because I remember performing, you know, at Rage with a Dream Girls review and just really kind of loving it for that. You know, there was no TV show. There was no, there was nothing really to aspire to other than just being fierce where you were at and, and kind of making a name throughout the country and sometimes around the world, but it didn't really have the same power that it does now. So to see drag where it's at now is wonderful. But I gotta tell you, I fucking missed back in the day. I missed when it was raw. I miss even being on my season when you could you know, you can put just drag together. You didn't need to find that special designer who makes the drag outfits or the bitch that does the wigs. The, right, you know, right. The, and get your special lashes from this place and, and what, what palette are you using on your fucking face? Are you wearing what's her name so and so? And it didn't have any of that. It was like, got it at the thrift shop. I made it look fiercer than what you're wearing. So <laughs> please worship me and I fuck everybody and let's just have a great time, you know? And there was no cameras. Mm. So the trouble we could get into was so much more fun. Right. So much more fun when no one was really recording all of the tawdry, disgusting, filthy things you were doing in the streets <laughs> in drag. <laughs> oh, I miss it. I miss it so much because I feel like it's just sort of been diluted in that way. You're losing the rawness and the, um, the provocative part of doing drag. And I miss that a lot. I miss it a lot. All right, you did it. Those were the questions from Reddit. Yeah. Maybe I should go into Reddit more. I mean, yeah, they love you. <laughs>